Um, yeah, I'm kind of glad that Lauren got to introduce Bitterbrush for me a little bit. And um, so I've been looking at uh, a number of ways to uh, enhance um, new Bitterbrush establishment on the ranch and uh, enhance uh, the health and potential palatability of existing Bitterbrush on the ranch. And today I'm just going to discuss a couple of the experiments, um, one that was begun a couple of years ago and one that we just um, installed last summer um, and that we should be getting some pretty interesting information from this summer. Um, antelope bitter brush, uh, Persia tridentata, uh, is a critical fall and winter food source for mule deer. Um, it's a has a high protein content, um, like Philip was mentioning earlier, it holds its leaves late in the season. Um, so when, when there's not a lot of other food around, mule deer can still access something, and, uh, and it also grows above snowpack levels. So uh, when there is a good amount of snow on the ground, uh, this is a natural food source for mule deer. Um, elk also eat it quite a bit. Um, I think it's not as big a part of elk diets as it is with mule deer, though. Um, so, in the interest of increasing um, bitter brush habitat for these animals, um, I'm, I've been looking a lot at, at ways to get new bitter brush started. Um, so, some research questions. Um, the first one is uh, competition with uh, annual invasives has been shown uh, by several people to be a primary cause for bitter brush seedling mortality and, uh, and also stand degeneration. So when, the, when, when new bitter brush are not establishing well, the whole stand senesces and uh, that's been a, a large problem across uh, the western U.S. Um, is the loss of range habitat to senescent uh, shrub stands. Um, so for this first study um, I wanted to look at uh, a, a fairly non-invaded area and, uh, and then an invaded area and look at how removal of plant competition in those areas will affect the establishment of young seedlings and also of, of new seeds uh, that will germinate in the soil. And then uh, a second study is um, a nitrogen fertilization study. Um, fertilizers have been shown to increase plant production uh, and also forage quality, um, uh, making the plants more uh, palatable and nutritious for, for wildlife. Um, but how do you fertilize just the shrubs that you want to fertilize and not fertilize all the cheatgrass that's around those shrubs or the leafy spurge or the knapweed? So uh, last summer we, I set up a big experiment to um, try and answer some of those questions about fertilizing shrubs uh, without providing benefits to uh, invasive annuals. Uh, so for the first study, the competition removal study uh, has three study sites at three different elevations, uh, 3,500 feet, 4,000 feet, and 4,600 feet, um, all of uh, with a, a southwest facing slopes. Um, this lower site is the least invaded site by far. It's dominated with sagebrush, bitterbrush, uh, sandberg bluegrass, and blue bunch wheatgrass. Um, the middle and upper sites are quite invaded. Uh, there, there's a good bit of bitterbrush and arrowleaf balsam root there, um, but then a lot of knapweed and cheatgrass, and sulfur sink foil. Um, and, the, and the upper site here has a good bit of leafy spurge as well. Uh, so, well, here's, 
the experimental design for this study was um, uh, set up in a block design like this um, with in three exclosures, 10 foot by 20 foot exclosures uh, at each of those sites. And uh, <clears throat> the treatments within these blocks were to go in and either remove all of the plants or not remove any of the plants, like a negative control, or to remove everything except for the, the shrubs that were there, um, and try and get a, um, an idea of, similar to the nurse plant idea, if uh, a neighboring shrub in a plot would, uh, would help or hinder the establishment of those new shrubs. Um, so, Here's a picture of one of those plots and what they look, or one of those exclosures with 15 plots within each exclosure. So uh, this, for example, looks like a plot where we, we left the bitter brush shrub but, but cleared everything else out. And down here you see this is a plot where everything got removed. And then this would be a plot where, where nothing got removed. So you've got all your your shrubs, forbs, grasses, and everything that already existed uh, stays there and you plant right into that. Um, here's a picture of one of the little seedlings and uh, some of the drip irrigation that we use to keep these things alive during uh, July and August of the past couple of years. Uh, so into all of these, uh, all 15 of these blocks in each exclosure, uh, we planted two six-month-old bitter brush shrubs that we had grown uh, in the greenhouse, and then 20 seeds um, in each of those to get a, an estimated percent germination, see what came up in each of these plots. And then we monitored uh, the branch number and the branch growth, uh, which both of those uh, sort of equate to the vigor of the plant, um, and then the seed germination in each plot. Um, so some results from that treatment, or from that study, uh, with the different treatments here, sorry about the small text, um, this is the shrub where we left the shrubs, the center is the totally cleared treatment, and on the right is the totally uncleared treatment. And uh, on the, this axis is the branch number, so the actual number of branches that the seedlings develop. And we saw significantly higher numbers of branches formed uh, in the cleared and, and the partially cleared sections. Um, for branch length, we saw the same thing. Um, significantly higher branch lengths uh, in the cleared and in the partially cleared where shrubs remain. Um, for germination percentages uh, from the seeds that were planted, uh, we saw higher germination percents about 12, 13 percent of everything that was put out. So it's not a, it's not a real successful germination effort, but um, based on what's out there in the literature, 13 percent is pretty good. Um, uh, but we did see higher percentages of germination across all of those sites and all of those plots from the cleared uh, treatment and from, and the highest from the partially cleared treatment where we left shrubs. So uh, clearly in these three graphs, um, the, the uncleared invaded uh, areas are, are ne clearly not as hospitable to allowing new seeds to germinate or uh, allowing for vigorous growth of young seedlings. Um, and then this last graph here in the bottom um, looks at the different sites. Uh, and there were, there were no differences among the different elevations, oh, excuse me, amongst the different elevation sites in either branch number or branch length, uh, which kind of surprised me. I thought 
thought that there would be, but uh, there was uh, one difference in uh, germination percentage. Oops. We had the highest germination percentage at the middle elevation site, um, slightly higher than, than that at the lower site. Um, for soil nutrients, uh, this axis here is two, two nutrients, uh, nitrate, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Um, nitrate is the, the tan here, and the darker khaki is phosphorus levels. Um, so I wanted to see how those nutrients varied with the different sites and with the different treatments. Um, well, phosphorus, there was no significant difference here among, this is the treatments, shrubs, cleared, uncleared. Um, but we did see uh, a bit, a good bit higher uh, nitrate, nitrogen, um, in the cleared and partially cleared treatments. Um, and I, I don't, you know, I'd, um, I'd like to think that that's due to uh, removing the plants and the quick growing uh, grasses that would suck up that readily available nitrogen. Um, uh, but yeah, I think a, an, another experiment could uh, help us tease that apart better. Um, by site, there were significant differences in nitrate and phosphorus levels, which is why I expected to see more differences um, in uh, plant vigor uh, among the sites, but we did not. So conclusions from this study were that branch number and length uh, and germination percentage were all greater in the cleared and partially cleared treatments. Um, Nitrate levels were greater in, in cleared and partially cleared areas, but despite those higher nitrate and phosphorus levels at the upper and middle sites, uh, we didn't see associated differences in uh, plant growth or plant vigor there. Um, so these results uh, reinforce that competition from surrounding plants and uh, um, shrubs, grasses, and forbs uh, may stunt or prevent bitter brush establishment, uh, and that clearly reducing the, the first year competition can improve that seed germination and seedling vigor. Um, the second study that's ongoing right now is this fertilizer study. Um, we wanted to ask how do fertilizer treatments affect uh, the establishment of young seedlings and seed germination, um, how do they affect uh, leader growth, and how do they affect foliar nutrients that may uh, affect the browsing of these shrubs. Um, and then also, how would a fertilizer treatment affect uh, the understory vegetation? Um, so this study involved uh, 200 uh, bitter brush shrubs um, up on the hill above uh, the old corral. And we established circular plots around all 200 of these shrubs and um, applied uh, a variety of different treatments, um, whoops, including uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium fertilizer, uh, just, just potassium and phosphorus fertilizer, um, sucrose, a nitropyrin, uh, and then also some herbicide treatments. Um, that sucrose amendment is a, a carbon addition, and the, the purpose of that is to immobilize nitrogen uh, in the bacterial biomass, thereby effectively reducing the amount of available nitrogen for, for uh, invasive weeds to grow on. Uh, the nitropyrin treatment, uh, that's a chemical that uh, inhibits nitrification, it gets used a lot in agricultural systems to prevent uh, soil bacteria from uh, turning your ammonium into nitrate. Uh, nitrate leaches out of systems 
quickly and is also more readily taken up by uh, fast growing annuals. Uh, so the idea of applying this nitropyrin would be to fertilize with an ammonium based fertilizer and then stabilize that nitrogen in the ammonium form and see if we could enhance uh, foliar nutrients in the shrubs uh, that way without losing our fertilizer to uh, nitrate forms. Uh, and then uh, a potassium and phosphate amendment uh, without adding nitrogen to the system um, we, we think may help favor nitrogen fixing plants. So bitter brush is a nitrogen fixing plant uh, and uh, in those treatment plots around all the 200 shrubs, uh, some of the shrubs got um, some nitrogen fixing uh, forbs planted here, uh, threadstalk milk vetch and Montana golden pea and woolly pod milk vetch. Um, and this spring we'll be able to see uh, which of those, if any, are coming up and how they're faring in the face of these different treatments. Um, so yeah, moving forward um, with this study, looking forward to um, measuring foliar nutrients and uh, doing vegetation surveys to see uh, what understory vegetation has done um, in the face of these treatments. Um, and it sh should be a pretty interesting story um, for uh, or a potentially useful application for uh, enhancing already mature bitter brush plants on the ranch. Any questions?